Hi again, welcome to the garage, I'm Pierre. Uh, today, we'll be measuring uh, accurate power because inductive loads are, you know, making the uh, readings pretty, uh, you know, they can throw you off pretty well uh, according to the uh, na natural formulas used for that. But uh, we'll be using this little device uh, first. There's going to be explanation on how and why we need to use uh, something to calculate the real uh, actual power drawn by inductive loads. And, you know, a few minutes of installation, We'll be performing some tests on the lathe with different uh, depth of cuts to measure the load and also a brief explanation at the end and, uh, you know, on the results. So uh, with no further delay, let's just uh, proceed with the explanation and uh, all the rest. Here the uh, formula that's uh, generally agreed upon is the watts are equals to volt multiplied by amps. And uh, for a resistive load, uh, what would you think the answer will be on this? And uh, for inductive loads, what would you think the, the answer is uh, for this? Is it true or false? True or false. So for resistive load, it's true. And uh, inductive load, mostly false. And uh, let's go to the next board, and uh, I'll explain brief, briefly how and why. So the main reason why that doesn't work for inductive loads, it's because of phase, uh, phase problems. Uh, a resistive load will give you like you got the voltage there and you got the amps there. So there, the peaks are together with the peaks and the deep the deeps are together with the deeps. But as soon as you get with the inductive loads, or it would be the uh, same for capacitive loads, but they would be uh, outphased the other direction. But uh, I'm not going to go very in depth with that because it's just like uh, a little bit too complicated for the scope of this video. Um, with the inductive load, you see that the peak, instead of being on the top there, in phase with the voltage, is right there it's one situation depending upon the value of the inductance and the peak there doesn't go with the peak around there uh, there the phase you know the phase is right there so it will give you a power factor like a, a factor different than one so the power factor being lower than one it will, gi will give you only one fraction of what the normal equation would give you. As maybe to help you make the difference between what's inductive, what's resistive, there are a few, just a few examples there. Resistive loaders, toasters, baseboards, light bulbs, incandescent uh, light bulbs. Uh, they're like near very near to 100% uh, resistive loads. So the power factor will be considered to be around one or very, very close to one. So the calculations for uh, uh, power uh, the formula with a uh, voltage multiplied by amps will be exact in this case. As inductive loads, you uh, consider motors, uh, transformers, relays, uh, most stuff made with uh, wire windings. Uh, even a welder, the older type welder, uh, you know, welders that are made with big transformers, uh, they're pretty much inductive. So the power factor will be different from one. You don't have a definite number on this. It's according to the inductance of the uh, of the load and how much current has been drawn. So this will be varying from near zero to near one, depending upon you know the combination. So uh, it's pretty uh, pretty hard to really have calculations made about that just out of you know out of the blue like that. So this is why we're going to be using this unit here. This uh, this little unit is. E expressly meant to measure the current that goes to the inductive load. Um, this goes to the, um, w you know, across one of the, let's say the conductor, measure the current in there. This is a uh, little coil. And this little device will do the calculations for uh, getting us the power factor and the effective uh, power just being drawn, you know, in watts. So uh, let's go and install this and uh, see how about it's installed. We'll uh, do a brief installation and also uh, a few tests on the on the lathe just to see how, uh, how with different loads it will vary the power factor and the resulting power. If you want to play it safe, which is al always what I, I would recommend, just to take the power off before working on electrical devices. Actually, you want to be sure that it's turned off, the electricity. There we go. Right here and there. 220 volts that uh, not exist. I took some measurement of that uh, little enclosed box, and I'll start making measurements on the uh, 
on the on the box here and do some uh, transposing. So by looking inside the box here, I got my uh, entry, my uh, inlet wires are right there. So I need to slip that little uh, ring around one of those two. Uh, 220 volts uh, single phase. The uh, current going in one is exactly the same current going back into the other branch. So uh, either one of them is a good uh, is a good option to put that little uh, ring around. The little box being there, I'll be able to uh, connect this there and keep the uh, little box right in there. I'll complete the line. That's all right. The other side. I did worse before on other projects. There we go. Trying to make um, a step ladder, so I'm trying to make myself as uh, stable as comfortable and comfortable as possible. I'll be using these uh, step drills here and uh, making a few holes that I will connect after with a blade or something similar. Let's make a uh, first hole. Wow, opening up the box. You stay close, please. That was just partially snapped. There we go, that will stay. There we go, this is pretty close. Uh, these step drills are uh, surprisingly good. Yeah, this is a quick message to my daughter, uh, Alex. I, I used to have a jigsaw around here. I don't know where it is. So I'll be using this. Uh, normally a very good way to finish this up is uh, liptonize the finishing. There we go, this fits. I'm not clipping it right away, just want to check a few things before. A little bit of a vacuuming is always a good thing. Okay, so far so good. The box clipped in place. Uh, I have to put that ring, that's a coil that measures the current to one of the phases, which is monophase anyway. So this goes right here. I'm going to be putting back this wire into the uh, main relay here. And just a second, that's pretty stiff wire though. And I'll be, uh, I'll be connecting those uh, this wire here in parallel there to uh, feed this module with 220 volts so they'll be completing the setup okay using a few tie wraps to get this dressed up i'm not going to uh, stick the sensor wires too close on the other wires in order to avoid the interference you know in the inducing interference into it so uh, i'll leave them uh, a little bit apart from the other ones okay that's done like I said, left that uh, away from the other wires so to avoid in inducing too many interferences in there. There you go. And uh, let's see how it works. Now what you see is the uh, power just turned on uh, on the primary. So uh, let's start the roto phase. Yeah, it's got a pony motor. It's going to take a few seconds before we get power. Now we get power. Now we see these uh, numbers here. They're uh, displayed and everything's working good. If you plug in the uh, system, that doesn't work. Um, there's uh, one thing to consider. I'll just show you what, uh, what correction has to be done uh, as to make this, uh, this work perfectly. If you got zeros all over there, I got no results on these three uh, displays. Okay, the correction, if you get zeros on the other side, see this coil here, which is the, you know, the, the power wire is going right through. You get a red and a black wire there. You just invert those two wires and this will give you the uh, proper display. As simple as that. What we're getting now is uh, idling power. Just the rotor phase is on. 
late is just like uh, if you know they let's say the control box is on but not not the motor on so I'll be doing cuts from uh, 25 thousandths to 200 thousandths and you'll be seeing the um, let's say the power increase as uh, as we're going let's get it uh, let's get it going this is this is uh, the motor itself we're turning 650 uh, rpms idle now we're gonna make uh, 25 a 2500 cut okay 25 Let's go for fifty thousandths. Fifty thousandths cut. We're going for a hundred thousand cut. This is a hundred thousand cut. This is the phone. Let's make a two hundred thousand cut. This is two hundred thousands. Got a little bit of chatter, but uh, so before fi uh, final compilation of the numbers and uh, drawing conclusions, let's just see what the uh, setup is exactly, so you can follow the uh, numbers a little bit more closely. So we got the utility here. Uh, North America residential uh, installations are 240 volts single phase you can have a uh, hundred and twenty volts but uh, for uh, let's say smaller appliances but this this is the, the way it comes in the house and this is the way it's fed into my phase converter so the power monitor we'll be uh, taking the numbers from is install the current is monitored to one of the branch here voltage monitor to the uh, you know the uh, the the, the, uh, the the two wires from this uh, 240 volts we're going to the phase converter this is a 20 horsepower phase converter that uh, takes 240 volts single phase goes to 240 volts three phases I need uh, 600 volts at the final so I need a step-up transformer from 240 to 600 then I'm feeding the late here which I'll be performing the test on today I've compiled everything onto this little board here uh, the condition which is like phase converter idling, the late just idling, and all the different uh, size of cuts here. The line voltage according to uh, the conditions, the amps from the line monitored at the entrance of the whole system, the apparent power here, which is the result of these two numbers, raw numbers there, multiplied by each other uh, according to the formula. This formula, if you take it the straight uh, just like that, it doesn't take into account the phase uh, shifting. So. Um, that's where the power monitor comes into play, where that's going to give you a power factor here of the different conditions according to the different phase shifting into the, uh, the system. So this will give you, in the last column there, the real power drawn in every condition. So um, what I did here, let's say you're taking the phase converter idling, it's 243 volts multiplied by 26 amps, it's going to give you an apparent just be always aware of this here 6.34 kilowatts Th this is a lot of a uh, lot of power but if you get um, the conversion with the power factor of 0.16 you will get in fact a real power consumption of 1.08 uh, it's almost 1.1 kilowatt so this is quite less than this uh, figure here um, this is not exactly relevant to uh, today's testing to measure the difference between the different situations and you know like uh, under power but we'll be just putting the late under power 
the motor is idling 650 rpms so the figures will change here quite drastically we're getting like uh, 10 kilowatts over of consumption but you bring back the power factor to a more realistic figure and it's going to give you 2.18 kilowatts which is a big difference from here so the different cuts here which i uh, compiled here let's say 10 kilowatts 10.89 you know up to 11.1 kilowatt here and the real power will be like 2.18 to 4.02 after just being co uh, you know, corrected with the power factor so this means that if you make the difference what i'll do here is the late is idling in this oops sorry about this the late is idling right there at 10 kilowatts effective power 2.18 and we're taking a 200 thousands cut which is a five millimeter cut and the figures would be like 11 kilowatt point one if you make the difference between those two figures here you make um, okay the difference here i uh, even gave you a hp figure too but the first number difference in kilowatts and hp the first one here is the number of kilowatts difference between the situation where the late is idling and the late is taking you know uh, you want two hundred thousand cut or five millimeter cut so that would mean here because it's kilowatts there so point two seventy five it's two hundred seventy five watts which is not really realistic and if you convert like uh, 750 watts is one horsepower so that would mean about one third of a horsepower there between the 25 uh, I mean idling late and you know a full uh, full grown cut at 200 thousands but let's get realistic it's not it doesn't look good so we'll be going to the real power figure here when the late is idling we got 2.18 kilowatts and when the late is you know undergoing the uh, you know more stress in the uh, performing a 200,000 cut, 5 millimeter cut, it will give you like 4.02 kilowatt. If you make the uh, differences here, it's going to give you 1.84 kilowatt. Or if you transform this into horsepower, 2.45 horsepower, which is a more realistic figure than the phone ringing at the bad time. Okay, that's final now. The uh, main purpose of why I made this video which is maybe not the most entertaining uh, form of video but uh, I wanted to be informative for some of you that uh, were wondering about real power and the apparent power mostly in inductive loads or light motors or things like uh, the sort um, I hope it helped you understand a little bit more and uh, maybe you can make your own measurements later for uh, let's say s this is a single phase unit though but uh, for uh, single phase measurements and uh, all the uh, similar applications this little uh, device here for i think it's 13 bucks or something around there i'll give you the description anyway if you want to have the same uh, same unit it's good for 100 amps you got units for uh, different powers but this is for 100 amps which is quite uh, reasonable for most applications so um, hope it helped you and uh, if you have any questions or anything just the description box and the comment section there is uh, right there for you so see you uh, see you next time and uh, enjoy the day